All right, everybody. I am excited to share this message today. We're going to talk about rest for your soul. This is a huge thing because, wow, do we struggle with this, right? Our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions, our personalities. And this is where we just struggle. You know, when you're at peace, you're at rest. When you feel safe, you can be at rest. If you don't feel safe, you won't be at peace and you will not be able to rest. And that requires faith in someone greater than ourselves and greater than our circumstances. And that person is the person of love. And so how do we get there from here? And I'm, I'm going to be sharing uh, quite a bit of uh, scripture today, which is great because I, I, I really feel I'm just believing for the Lord to bathe you uh, in revelation about his love for you, his care for you, his mastery about what he's doing in you, what he's doing through you, what he's doing at, on the earth realm where things are so jacked up. <laughs> maybe what he's doing in you where maybe you're so jacked up. I don't know. We all have our issues, right? And God is constantly about the work of redeeming his creation. And this is where wow, in the bigness of who he is and the beauty of who he is, that we can grow in our revelation about who he is so we can rest, so that we can trust. They're all interrelated. Uh, let's go to Proverbs 3, uh, 5 through 8. And this is a well-known scripture, but we're going to bathe in it, okay? Uh, it says, trust in the Lord completely. Okay, so this requires his empowerment, right? Where are the areas that we don't trust? And do not rely on your own opinions. <laughs> so Andrew Womack uh, at Karis Bible College used to say, I mean, he probably still does, uh, that opinions are like noses. Everybody has them and they're full of holes, right? And so we all have a limited perspective. We all have an opinion about stuff. And this is related to our experience, this is related to stuff happening to us or not happening to us, what we made it mean that it should have meant and what we made it mean that it shouldn't have meant. And it's a mixed bag. And the truth is um, your opinion matters, but the truth is compared to God's, you and my opinion are pretty, um, are, well, let me put it this way, are absolutely secondary. In other words, God's truth trumps our opinions. Now, bringing our opinions to him, our experience is really important because it needs to be healed. Uh, but the bottom line is we all have stupid belief systems and stupid opinions that aren't in line with truth. And that is where we suffer and we suffer needlessly. This is what keeps us from transcending our situations, our struggles, all of that, so that we're upgraded in his image and likeness. So this is trust in the Lord. So understand when God gives a command, it's not like, well, work it out, honey, you're all on your own, like make it happen. Well, you know what? If I am in and of myself trying to trust the Lord in a place where I've been harmed, in a place where it hasn't seemed that the Lord was trustworthy, where he um, failed me or blah, 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 or where it feels like he failed me because God didn't fail you, but it sure as heck feels like it sometimes. Um, it's going to be impossible or very hard for me to trust. So this is where God's commandment to trust in him comes with the empowerment to do so. This is what he's working out in us. So it's God conforming us into the image and likeness of Christ where we can trust. He empowers what he commands. And this is an ongoing process. You know, when you think about it, um, Christ as the son of God, when he was on the cross and he, he had become sin. He'd entered in the human uh, 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 experience of feeling forsaken when he cried out with a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Well, that wasn't what Father God did. The, the Trinity does not forsake the Trinity. God never forsakes his kids, including his son. So that concept that God actually forsook his son is actually really crappy theology. But he entered into our experience where that is what we felt. And then understand, he goes on further to say, into your hands, 
I commit myself. That is the ultimate trust. And if the son of God operating as a human being was able to enter the place on the cross where he became sin and experienced what it felt like to feel completely separated from his father, um, when he entered that, and then he could trust that as he died, he would be not only commit his spirit, but that he would be resurrected again. So if he did that as a human being, there's an empowerment that Holy Spirit has for us in the place where we feel forsaken, in the place where we feel like I'm dying and going down, and I trust you to resurrect me. In a, in a in a manner of speaking and we and we have we who well I won't go in any further than that there's an empowerment with what God commands okay so when he says trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions well number one he's going to give us grace to do that in increasing measure it says with all your heart rely on him to guide you so this is a leaning into him I am leaning in you to guide me and honestly, I am not trusting myself to be able to have worked it out, figured it out, or make it happen. Okay. So that's a healthy distrust of self, right? So um, so in this place where you have this distrust of yourself in and of yourself, you lean in, rely in on God, who's the one who is love who never fails and the one who loved you and gave himself up for you. So it's not love in general, like fluffy Buffy out there. It's love that's already sacrificed for you. And that is other giving co-suffering. So in your suffering, he's suffering and he knows how to bring you out of that and cause you to transcend it. And that's the one that you are putting, the one who is faithful when you are faithless, when you have no faith, I don't got it in me. He's the one that's faithful because he can't deny himself, right? Uh, with all your heart, rely on him to guide you and he will lead you in every decision to make, all right? So there's a leading and there's a resting and there's a leaning into. Jesus said, as you remain in me and me and you, you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But the truth is we're not apart from him, but every place where we act like we are, uh, we're not gonna bear much fruit, right? Uh, it says, don't think for a moment that you know it all. <laughs> we get in so much trouble when we think we know, right? And God will let us wander off in our little delusion. He'll be there with us in our wandering. Okay, but the, the, the place where we can say, you know what? I really don't know. This has been my experience, but you know what? I don't know. There could be another experience. Like this, my experience of what I've experienced is not all there is to experience. And a lot of times where we have had really negative experiences, maybe even traumatic, horrific experiences, um, we tend to project those into our future and then we walk into them. It's almost like a prophetic word that we've spoken over our lives so that we repeat cycles. And instead of, okay, so this is every bit of what it was and God, what's your response so that I can walk in to the hope and future that you have for me, right? It says, don't think for a moment that you know it all for wisdom uh, comes when you adore him with undivided devotion and avoid everything that's wrong. Okay, so this is a an ongoing thing. It's not like, wow, well, when you're perfect, this will work for you. No, this is this is cooperating with the perfecting or maturing uh, work that he is doing. So, um, so when you we have the humility to say, I don't know it all, and when you look like, wow, I'm so adored, I'm just going to adore him back right? The only reason you love him is because he first loved you. And so the more you experience that, you're going to automatically love him. So this is a response, not something you work up. God initiates. And as our hearts heal, we respond in kind. We respond in, in love more and more and more um, with undivided devotion. What is that saying? That is saying uh, when you have divided devotions, that means you have these, you have him, and then you have all these idols, that you're dividing, like, oh, you're a source and you're a source and you're a source. And I only can trust in myself or I only, if I, if I just have that human being in my life, uh, I'll be good. If I just have this, if I just have that, you know, we make all sorts of things, idols. Um, um, and, uh, so when we, we say, no, no, he's the one that I'm responding to because he's love. So I love him back and I'm not going to look to anyone else as a source. 
and avoid everything that's wrong. Well, you know, uh, we're, we're walking in that. So the more that we're avoiding that's wrong, it's brilliant. But understand this is a process, right? So as we're being conformed to his image, we're tracking with who we really are and we're able to avoid more things that are wrong, right? I, I think wrong a lot. And so God's constantly working with me to think better, to see better, to understand better and to, to track with him better, to track with myself better. And so that my behavior comes up higher. So this is the fruit that we find. Uh, and then you will find healing refreshment for your body and spirit, that healing refreshment that you long for. So when you're dependent on him and following him, the more you do that, the more there's healing and refreshment. You know why? You're not trying, you're not acting as if you're an orphan without a parent, without a good parent, without the good parent, right? You're not trying to work it up and figure it out. Well, you know, good luck with that. Uh, you know, it's how's that working for you? It's not. I, I'm telling you, it's not, and it's not when I do it. So as I as I track more with him as my loving daddy, lead me, because I don't know what the heck I'm doing, right? As I rest as a beloved daughter. I'm able to follow uh, my my father, his spirit to lead me and guide me. And I find healing refreshment that my body and spirit, my whole being long for. We long to be refreshed. We long to be healed. And this is what we get as we follow him, right? Um, there's a, a the, um, uh, the commentary says uh, he, uh, Become intimate with him in whatever you do, and he will lead you wherever you go. So, you know, it's not, this is not like a transaction. Like I, I become intimate. So you do that. No, he's constantly trying to lead you, but we won't be able to follow his leading unless we enter into increasing measure that intimacy, right? I won't be able to track with God if I'm not looking towards God, if I'm not cultivating a relationship with God and it takes cultivation, right? He says, um, when you rely on him to guide you, he will lead you in every decision you make, become intimate with him in whatever you do, and he will lead you wherever you go. So he's constantly leading you. And this is not necessarily like the next job or whatever it can be, or, you know, should I marry this person? It certainly can be. Um, but also just what's the next thing that I need to put my mind on? What is the thing that you're teaching me? What is the thoughts that, that are out of alignment that are perverse thoughts? They're pervert to be perverted means to be twisted. And so if my thoughts are twisted, I'm not going to be reaping life. Right. And so how are you untwisting my thoughts? So I'm thinking clearly like you think that is following his leading. And the more intimate we become, the easier it is to follow him and understand where he's leading you. He's empowering you to go. And so this is an ongoing process and the beauty of it, you know, uh, we all want, want quick fixes, but the thing is, if we get quick fixes, we learn nothing about God and our relationship with him doesn't grow. So this is about cultivating intimacy and it all stems from that. It says, and then you will find uh, healing and refreshment that you need. It says, um, lead you in every decision you make, or the uh, the commentary says, he will cut a straight path before you, right? So he levels things out and he creates a straight path in the ways that have been twisted and, and jacked up. It's um, the commentary also says, we should always be willing to listen to correction and instruction. Not that's not because you're bad. It's because you're good and you're so good. God's unwilling to leave you where you at. So we're listening to correction and instruction. So let's go to Psalm uh, 23. I'm reading this in the Passion Translation. And uh, it says Yahweh, the Old Testament word for God is my best friend and my shepherd. Okay. So this is the one you are in relationship with and increasing in the knowledge of that relationship. He's already chosen you already gave himself up for you. And he wants you to know him more. And truly he's your best friend and your shepherd. What's a shepherd? A shepherd is someone who herds and takes care of and tends sheep. Sheep are clueless. Sheep are stupid. <laughs> they are. They're adorable, uh, but they're also very vulnerable. So they need to be protected. They need to be shepherded or led or 
corralled or guided. Um, God leads them into places uh, to attend their needs and to heal their wounds and to protect them. Okay. So he's your, he's the one shepherding you. And that's good because we all need shepherding. Uh, verse two, he offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. You see, when love is luxurious, that means, oh, it hits every spot. And let me tell you, love is what you need because love is what heals. Love is what refreshes. Love is the person of Papa Jesus, Holy Spirit, right? And he's offering you, it's an offer. And um, if you're not willing to go, he's not going to force you, but he offers a resting place in his luxurious love. You can rest if you're loved, because if you're loved, you are safe. Okay. And you can trust his tracks. Take me to an oasis of peace near the quiet brook of bliss. So this is the shepherd and your best friend who's leading you to an oasis of peace. An oasis is a place of life in the midst of a desert. So there's desert places, there's hard places, there's rocky places, there's dry places in your life. And, and your best friend and your shepherd is leading you to that oasis of peace. Oh, wait, that's in him, right? And it's in you. That oasis of peace is in you. When you felt that calm, when you felt that peace, this is him saying, yeah, honey, I'm right here. I'm always right here. I'm never not here, right? Um, he leads you near the quiet brook of bliss. So bliss is joy. It doesn't have to be ecstatic, um, like sh uh, dangling on the chandelier's joy. It's just joy, right? Because, oh my goodness, there's life here. There's everything you ever wanted there that's where he restores and revives my life so he's leading you into the place of oasis of peace near the quiet brook of bliss where he revives which means to bring back to life and restores to bring back the stores of your life that have been stolen or lost your life he opens before you and me the path the right path and leads me in his footsteps of righteousness. So this being this righteousness is this issue of rightness, truth of who you are, of who he is. Um, and he's leading you in those pla places and, 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 and stripping off you these ways of being that are not righteous. Right. So I can bring honor to his name. Okay, this brings honor to his name. Now, is God needing you to fluff and buff him because he's got an ego problem? No, it's just as he does this, it's like, oh, this is who you are. And I'm seeing you, <laughs> you as who you are, right? It says, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, okay, sometimes God will take you in places of darkness to heal darkness. See, the only way to confront and heal is to bring up things that are dark and broken, right? Fear will never conquer me for you already have. See, this is where knowing God as the person of love, he conquers your heart, not as a, um, as a malevolent conqueror, but just he wins your heart. Because love woos your heart, right? He's after your heart. He is after your heart. Um, and as that happens, perfect love casts out fear. So even in darkness, you don't need to be afraid because he's leading you through to heal you, to restore you, to revive your life. It says, uh, your authority is my strength and peace right? So God's authority, God is number one. God is sovereign above all things and the name above every name. So if it has a name, you know, hell, the demonic, um, cancer, uh, pick a, pick a, pick a card, right? Darkness, uh, rape, um, death. Okay. Jesus is the name above that, right? So his authority is above that. Your authority is my strength. His authority is your strength. And my peace. He's his authority is your peace. Why? He speaks, he speaks to the wind and the waves that come up against you to swallow your life and says, peace be still, right? I will never be lonely for you are near. 
See, every orphan-hearted person feels alone. That's one of the triad of the orphan-hearted person. They feel alone, but you're never alone because God has already chosen you and joined you to himself and is awakening to his ongoing presence. Um, you become my delicious feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. Okay, so God, isn't that interesting? You become my delicious feast. So we feast off of Christ. This is a reminiscent of the communion where we partake of his broken body, body broken for us for our healing and his blood for the forgiveness and washing of sins so that we're restored. And as we feed off of him, the happier he gets. So you become my delicious feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. So who are your enemies? Well, they're not really flesh and blood. Uh, the enemy is the spiritual dynamics that are moving through people that cause the perverseness and that kind of thing. When they dare to fight, whoo, we can feast on him. As a matter of fact, the more we feast on him, his peace, his joy, his love, uh, it's like the enemy has to stand and watch <laughs> because Jesus is the one with all authority, right? Uh, you anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You know what that means? That means uh, you're the anointing with the fragrance that you carry Holy Spirit. You carry God and you smell like God in the spirit. This is what the enemy hates, right? Because you look like God, you smell like God. And the more you know it, the more it comes from the inside out. This is working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Um. You give me all I can drink of you until my cup overflows. Once again, we're partaking of him. He is the river of bliss. So we're partaking of God. We're partaking of his joy. We're partaking of his peace. Um, you know, this is the rivers of bliss. Um, and we're partaking of him until it overflows. Like it doesn't run, run dry. Not a little dab will do, right? So why would I fear the future? Um, Paul Young would say, why would I future trip? Thinking of all these disastrous scenarios of what could happen that hasn't happened. That's negative, right? Um, why would I fear the future? Love is there. God's there. Um, only goodness and tender love pursue me all the days of my life. God is in pursuit of you, not just for you to say a sinner's prayer, like by all means do that if that's helpful, but choose him is really, he's in pursuit of your heart to conquer your heart, not to hold it captive in the sense of, because him holding your heart captive is actually your freedom, <laughs> right? So you receiving his love because he simply loves you and is nothing but good for you and loving him back. That's how this intimacy grows and you experience eternal life, which is knowing God and Jesus, the son um, and goodness and tender love. Pursue me all the days of your life, every day of your life. God has pursued you, his tender love and his goodness. Then afterwards, when my life is through, I will return to your glorious presence to be with you forever. So death is simply, oh, we transition. Oh, I'm with you. Now, as the more you track with him as the person of love, that's the experience of heaven on the other side. That is eternal life, right? Um, so some commentary. Um, the word most commonly used for shepherd is taken from the root word ra'a. I'm sure I said that wrong. It's probably ra'a, something like that, you know, how, <laughs> which is the Hebrew word for best friend. Isn't that great? The translation includes both meanings. The unique term for shepherd is ro'etzon, lover of the flock. He's the lover of the flock. And you're his member of his little flock. You're not the black sheep. You're in. You're all in. Okay. Uh, this teaches us that a shepherd was not just a responsible overseer, but a caring father figure tending to his flock out of a deep, sense of love. What's his motive? He loves you. That's his motive. Yep. Shepherds were also fierce protectors. Who? There are times when you can experience the fierce protection of God. And that's amazing because we need it sometimes. We do get attacked. Shepherds, um, Jesus is the fierce protector of his people. Who is fierce? Love is fierce fighting for you, right? Um, 
let's see, verse two, where it says, let's see here. Uh, he offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace near the brooks of peace. Um, verse two is in the, in the, uh, in the spring green meadows. This is where he's taking you, right? A good shepherd knows where to pasture his flock. See, he knows where to lead you. These green meadows would be a resting place free from all, all fear. Perfect love casts out fear, right? Um, uh, the Greek, the Greek verb to love is agapeo, which we've heard of agape love, which is other giving, self-sacrificing, um, uh, uh, other centered co-suffering love. It's all about the other with a merging of two words and two concepts. Ago means to lead like a shepherd and peo is a verb that means to rest. So love is our shepherd leading us to the true place of true rest in his heart. Oh, safe place where you can rest. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace near the quiet brook of peace, right? Um, the Hebrew word, uh, menu ha, I know I said that wrong, means waters of a resting place. See, this is a way where you get refreshed. These are the waters. These are the living waters. This is himself, Holy Spirit, him slash herself that you partake of, right? Um, uh, and he refreshes and revives your soul or the commentaries, or he causes my life or soul to return. So often life drains out of us uh, through our many activities. But as David found, who was the author, King David was the author of this psalm. God restores our well-being when we pursue what pleases God and when we rest in him. Let me just say this. When we pursue that, what pleases God, what do you think pleases God? Yes, I know faith pleases God. Yeah, I know. But faith is what? Trust is rest. When we're pursuing resting and trusting in him, that way he can be the shepherd that restores our soul. That's what we're pl what pleases him. When we partake of him, that's what pleases him. He's not looking for some behavior. He's looking for a heart that rests in him more and more and lets him love you. Let's him heal you. And you see, the more you trust, the more you'll let him love you and let him heal you. And then you love him in return. And there's this intimacy cycle that happens out of which life flows. Hallelujah. Right. Um, uh, he takes me uh, in paths of righteousness. Now, this is really cool. I had not ever heard this before. It says, or circular paths of righteousness. It's a common trait for sheep on the hillsides of Israel to circle their way up higher. How many times do you feel like you're going in circles? And I'm like, if you're following God, but it still feels like you're going in circles, well, trust that he's spiraling you up instead of a, a negative uh, cursed spiral. It's a positive, blessed spiral upwards. And sometimes that requires that kind. You can't go, can't go up. It's walking it out from glory to glory to glory, right? They eventually form a path that leads them up higher. This is what the Psalm is referring to here. Each step we take following our shepherd will lead us higher, even though it may seem that we're coming in circles. Um, isn't that amazing? Um, we, we can rest in his authority. That's where it says your rod and staff, they comfort me. His authority, he is a name above all names, man. He is kicking butt and taking names in all sorts of ways that we can rest that he's moving, even we, when we can't always see where he's moving, right? Um, another Psalm that's beautiful, Psalm 56, uh, three, but in the day that I'm afraid, so if this is a day that you're afraid, I'll lay all my fears before you and trust in you with all my heart. So wherever you're afraid, bring your fear to the Lord, lay it before the Lord and let him help you trust him more and more. You'll start to experience that peace. You'll start to experience that love that casts out fears, right? So this is his min ongoing ministry to us as a person of love. Psalm, um, oh, this is beautiful. Uh, are you ready for this one? Psalm 37, five. It says, give God the right to direct your life. You get to be Lord. This is why Jesus, your Lord, you're smarter than me. Okay. This is where we bow down before him. Why? He's smarter. It's like, yeah, you're smarter than me. 
Give him the right to direct your life. And as you trust in him along the way, you'll find he pulled it off perfectly. So where things have been a hellhole or whatever, wow, trust in him. You'll find he's leading you out bit by bit. Maybe it's a spiral thing, bit by bit by bit, trusting in him. And you'll find looking backwards, he pulled it off perfectly. And people have been walking with the Lord for, for years. Look back, it's like, wow, I, wow. A lot of times you don't see it except in hindsight, but we need to trust in the now with what he's doing now. Uh, Psalm 33, 21, as we trust, we rejoice with an uncontained joy flowing from Yahweh. This is entering his rest. There's joy in his rest. This is the brooks of a bliss, right? Psalm 115, 111.5. He satisfies all who love and trust him and he keeps every promise he makes. Okay. So once again, he's not asking you, well, love me, hop through the hoop and trust me, hop through the hoop. And then I'll transactionally give you um, these, this satisfaction. No, this is the fruit as he's leading you um, into loving him back because you're letting him love you and, and growing in your trust for him, there is satisfaction that comes and you will find he keeps all the promises he makes. Psalm 33, 22, let your love and steadfast kindness overshadow us continually for we trust and we wait upon you. This is, uh, resting. So his love and steadfast means he is always kind overshadow us like it's we need to be overshadowed with this love and kindness continually right this is him um this is as we're trusting and resting more and more we're able to experience that matthew 11 20 8 29 i, I talk on this one a lot but we're going to read it from the passion translation it says are you weary carrying a heavy burden come to me i will refresh your life for i am your oasis Simply join your life with mine, learn my ways, and you'll discover that I'm gentle, humble, easy to please. You will find refreshment and rest in me. For all of that I require of you will be pleasant and easy to bear. So when you're weary and you're worn out and you're heaven, come to him. This is where he invites Um the Aramaic, uh, where it says, um, I am your oasis, is, is the Aramaic is tw tranquil or peaceful, right? Um, it's, it says um, in verse 29, let me see. Simply join your life, learn my ways, you discover that I'm gem gentle, humble, easy to please. You will find refreshment and rest. The Aramaic says, come to me. I will cheer and refresh you. A lot of you are depressed. You need cheering up. Uh, I am cheerful, refreshing, and humble in heart. He's there to serve. He's not asking you to serve him. He's asking you to let him serve you. And as you experience him, you're going to do the one thing that he asks of you, which is to love as he loves, which is your service. If he has your heart, he'll have your service. Okay. Um, I'm cheerful, refreshing, humble in heart, and you will find cheer refreshing for your soul. Um and where it says, for all that I require of you will be pleasant and easy to bear. It means delightful. You'll find that that he, he is delightful and serving him and walking with him, yoking in with love is delightful. And this last one I'll leave you with Psalm 55, 22. Here's what I've learned through it all. Okay, here's some wisdom from someone who's been through a lot. Leave all your cares and anxieties at the feet of the Lord and measureless grace will strengthen you. This is where you can rest his grace that has no measure, his love. That's just who he is. As you bring these things to him, you have this divine exchange and you will find rest for your soul. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, let me hear from you. Share this with someone who needs it. Love you guys. Bye-bye.